A few weeks ago, I did some testing booting my Raspberry Pi 4 off some USB SSDs. I found that using the right SATA adapter, I would get way better performance with SSDs than I could with even the fastest micro SD cards I've tested. But I got an email from Rob Logan mentioning the performance of some other types of drives he had with him, and he even offered to ship a few drives to me for comparisons. So I took him up on the offer and he sent me these. This is an XPG SX6000 NVMe solid state drive installed in a TDBT NVMe enclosure. I think I might pass out trying to say all these acronyms, we'll see. Anyways, this is an Arcanite AK58 USB 3.1 flash drive, and I was really interested in the Arcanite flash drive because some reviewers have been saying things like, it's the fastest USB flash drive I've ever tested, and I wanted to see if maybe the state of flash drives had improved. You see, a few years back, I started seeing if I could store and run VM disk images on my Mac from flash drives so I could swap them between my Macs quickly. But I found the performance was horrible for all the flash drives I tested. It felt like I was booting the VMs from a floppy disk. So I got to benchmarking and also had a number of back and forth emails with Rob, who is testing even more devices than me. He convinced me to give the Corsair Flash Voyager GTX a try, since it seemed like it might also be a contender. I could have been a contender. And for a complete comparison, I grabbed a couple flash drives I had in my box of USB storage devices. This SanDisk Ultra Flare and this SanDisk Ultra Fit, both of which say they're compatible with USB 3.0. I followed the instructions from my video explaining how to boot the Pi 4 off a USB drive, and I ran benchmarks on every one of these drives, testing their sequential read and write performance with HD Parm and DD, as well as their random 4K read and write performance with IOZone. Sequential performance helps you know how the drive will do copying large files. That's helpful for things like backups, NAS use, or using your Pi for media files. Random access performance, though, helps you know how the drive will perform for everyday computing tasks like booting the Pi, opening apps, accessing files, or running web apps that have to read and compile many tiny files to work. So how did all these drives perform? I ran all the tests booting the Pi from the device being tested, and I also ran the same benchmarks on my fastest microSD card, a Samsung Evo Plus. The sequential results show a huge gap between the SSDs and fast new USB flash drives and the cheaper older gen flash drives and the micro SD card. From what I've found, it seems like most USB flash drives are basically the exact same electronics as you'd find in a micro SD card, just soldered inside a USB adapter instead of a micro SD card. The Arcanite does well here, but it does lag a little bit behind the SSDs and even the Corsair GTX. Let's move on to random 4K performance. Here we see a bit more of a complex picture. The performance of the older flash drive remains abysmal, with even the micro SD card trouncing them in random 4K performance. But the Arcanite also falls off quite a bit in comparison to the SSDs in the Corsair. And the XPG NVMe drive trounces all the other options for writes. So overall, it looks like a decent quality NVMe drive and USB enclosure is gonna give the best possible performance. And the Corsair GTX is by far the fastest USB flash drive I've ever tested. But there's one other test I wanted to do before closing the book on performance, and that's a massive 10 gigabyte file copy over the network. This test won't necessarily sustain the maximum sequential throughput for the drive, but it does take a long time and tests how well different devices handle heat from consistent use. This benchmark uncovers interesting results. It looks like devices like the Arcanite and the SanDisk Ultra Fit perform much worse for long duration file copies than all the rest. The Arcanite was only a tiny bit slower than the SSDs in the Corsair in the quick sequential tests, and the Ultra Fit was actually slightly faster than the Ultra Flare. Why do they perform so much worse in this benchmark? Well, I pulled out my Seek thermal camera to try to figure out the reason. During the test, here's a picture of the Ultra Fit. I put some thermal tape on the tiny bit of metal that was exposed when it's plugged in, and the temperature measured over 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit. The Arcanite's plastic body didn't measure quite so hot, but that's actually the problem. Plastic is actually a thermal insulator, and that's why you often see it used in coolers. Metal, on the other hand, is pretty good at dispersing heat, but you have to have enough area for the metal to disperse the heat, or the drive is going to get really hot. The Arcanite's plastic body traps the heat inside, which leads to overheating, while the Ultrafit's tiny profile doesn't leave enough room for the metal body on it to dissipate heat. Compare that to the much beefier Corsair, which is made of solid metal and disperses heat much more evenly. 
Even under heavy right load, the Corsair kept its cool at 36 degrees Celsius, which is less than 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you look at the benchmarks on the packaging, or even benchmarks posted to Amazon reviews from Crystal Diskmark, remember that most of those benchmarks don't reflect the true performance of these drives in real-world conditions. An SSD or NVMe drive has a lot more surface area than any of the other options for heat dispersion, so they tend to perform more consistently since they can avoid overheating. Most USB flash drives, though, tend to be designed for compactness and convenience, and performance is usually an afterthought. Usually, that is, unless we're talking about the Corsair. This is the first USB flash drive I've tested that actually compares well to USB SSDs. But what about price? What drive is going to give you the most bang for your buck? After all, the Corsair is 55 bucks, while the cheapest option, the USB Fit, is less than 10. When you go to buy a USB drive for your Pi, you want the best overall value, and you might want to sacrifice a little performance for a lot in savings. So comparing all these drives at a 128 gig size, I came up with these two graphs. In the first graph, I compare how many dollars you have to spend per megabyte per second on a large file copy. You can see the Arcanite gives the best bang for your buck, giving double the value of the SSDs or the Corsair. The Kingston SSD comes in second, while the microSD and older SanDisk flash drives are a pretty poor choice when it comes to value. In the second graph, the microSD card fares much better, while the older SanDisk flash drives are still a really bad value. But here, the XPG NVMe drive becomes the best value, with the Kingston SSD and Corsair GTX in pretty close pursuit. The Arcanite is a bit of a laggard, but it's still respectable and, and has comparable performance to the microSD card. But what do these values mean? Should you get the XPG drive or the Corsair for the best raw performance? Or should you stick with the Arcanite, which gives the best bang for your buck for sequential performance? Well, that's impossible for me to answer. If you're going to store large files on the drive and use it as a media server or NAS, then an Arcanite might be the best option. If you want to run applications or use the Pi as a desktop, the NVMe drive in an enclosure is probably the best option. Or if you want the most portable Pi possible using the least amount of space and energy, you might be willing to sacrifice a little more performance and stick with a reliable microSD card. Or if you need even more performance, you might want to look at a different single board computer that offers built-in SATA or NVMe support. In the end, it's really up to how you want to use your Raspberry Pi, and I just hope this video makes your decision a little bit easier. Now, before you go, please check the description for a link to all the drives mentioned in the review and to a blog post where I have even more test data with other drives from Rob Logan. And thanks so much to Rob for sending me some drives to test. If you want to support my work on YouTube, please consider sponsoring me on GitHub or Patreon using the links in the description. Until next time, I'm Jeff Geerling.